Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Blogs on YouTube, and today I'm going to bring you guys a review of the new Akara Smart H2 UK wall outlet. So Akara have actually only just released this, but they were kind enough to send me it to review at the start of November last year. That means at the time of recording, I've been using it for about two months. That means I haven't paid for the product you're going to see in this video. However, when a company reaches out and offers to send me something, I will only agree if I can say whatever I like in the review. And in fact, Akara will have no idea what I'm going to say until this video goes live. It's also worth saying that I have actually spent some money to get it installed by a professional. And really this product is the next step on from a smart plug. And smart plugs have been around a really long time. And they're still a great affordable way of making things smart around your home. However, quite often they leave something sticking out from your socket and perhaps don't look as good as you'd like them to. That's where this device comes in. So let's start off and talk about what you get in the box. So when you buy a H2 UK, you can choose from two different options. You can get one with one USB-C port or one with two USB-C ports. Akara sent me one with two, and personally, I think that's probably the one most people should go for. In the box, you get the double socket itself, you get a spacer because it is a bit deeper than your average socket, and you get some instructions. This is a good time to move on to spec for it. So this socket can be used in thread or Zigbee mode. Now the main difference between the two modes is if you want power monitoring in the Akara app. And if you do want power monitoring, you are going to need it in Zigbee mode. If you want to use it in Zigbee mode, you are going to need some kind of Akara hub that acts as your Zigbee hub. Now I already have the M3, but Akara hubs that work with this can be as little as 25 pounds. So it's not a huge expense to add on if you do want to use it in Zigbee mode. If you want to use it in thread mode, you can use it with whichever thread border router you already have in your house. So for me, that's HomePod minis. If you don't already have one, Akara do do one for as low as 20 pounds. All of this means it does work with Apple Home, Google Home, SmartThings, Alexa, Home Assistant, and basically anything you can get a Matter or Zigbee device into. On the Matter side of things, it can also serve as a thread mesh extender. This can help widen the thread network and make it stronger across your house. When it comes to the dual USB-C option, this gives you two USB-C ports, and you basically have 30 watts to share between them. That means it could power a HomePod Mini, but only if you use one of them. That's because a HomePod Mini requires 30 watts of power. If you go with a single USB H2, then it actually only supports up to 20 watts with their USB-C port. Each socket can be controlled individually using the buttons on the device, but also in the Akara app and any third-party app. And in the Akara app, you can also toggle the USB ports on or off. For some reason, these don't get exposed to Apple Home, which is a shame. As I said, the sockets do also have physical buttons on, which is great for less tech-savvy family members or when you want to easily flick something off. These do by default have lights on when they've got power and lights off when they don't, but you can change these settings in the Akara app. This is great if you want to use this socket in somewhere like a bedroom and you want those lights switched off all the time. The final thing is around price, and at the time of recording, I don't actually know how much it's going to cost, but I think it's going to be about £50. I will of course make sure there's some up-to-date links below for you. So let's get on to installation and setup. Now firstly, if you don't know what you're doing, then you're going to want a professional to come and install this for you. And if I'm being honest, usually I'd change a socket myself because generally it's just a case of taking some wires out and putting other wires in and making sure you have isolated power before you do that. However, it was going to go in my kitchen and there were a lot of cables behind that socket. That meant I did get an electrician out who I've used before to come and do that for me. And actually he tidied up all the cables behind it and installed it properly. Of course, if you're going to get a professional to install it, you do want to factor in the expense of that. Once it's all installed and has power, you want to open up the Akara app. Here you're going to hit the plus in the top and find the device. Sometimes these devices appear automatically at the top, but sometimes I also find you need to scan the QR codes on the device. This is below the faceplate on the front of it, and you can get to that without having to cut off power. You might also want to take a photo of that QR code while you've got the faceplate off. During the setup process, you'll choose if you want it in thread or Zigbee mode. If you're using Matter, you want to add it into your Matter Home app of choice. So for me, that's Apple Home. I did, however, put it in Zigbee mode so I could test out the power monitoring features. And because I already had an Akara hub, it meant I could just add it to that. Because that Akara M3 hub was already paired to my Apple Home, the device just appeared. One other thing you might want to do is go into the settings as well and play around with the light settings on the device if you don't want the lights on the buttons to always be on. And there's three options with these lights. You can turn them off all the time, you can have them on when a device has power, or you can have them off when a device has power. So what is this like to use? And much like any smart plug, there are a whole variety of ways you can use this. So you could use it with an automation. So perhaps when a certain time of day happens or when someone arrives home or leaves, you want to turn power on or off. You can easily do this in the Akara app, but you can also do this in something like Apple Home. You could also use it with something like a present sensor. So if it's hooked up to a lamp, maybe when your present sensor detects presence, it turns on the light. And when it stops detecting presence, you turn off the light. And again, you can set all of this up in the Akara app or the Apple Home app or whatever app you want to use. 
And I do actually really like the Akara app for creating automations, especially as it has the option to run them locally in LAN mode. But regardless of which app you set these automations up in, I found that they're reliable and they run every single time. And once again, if you want to use something like geofencing to automate it based on location, you can do that in Apple Home or in the Akara app. The geofencing in the Akara app is in beta mode, but it does seem to be working reasonably well. Personally, I do prefer doing these things in Apple Home, especially if everyone in your house has already got an iPhone. It basically means no one has to download an extra app. The physical buttons on this device are great to have as well, because sometimes that's just the easiest way to control it. I've also used both USB-C sockets. Although what I have found myself doing it is actually just switching to use one so I can power my HomePod mini from it. As with kind of all smart plug reviews I think I've ever done, the power monitoring in the Zigbee mode is nice to have, but in all honesty, it's not really something I use. But are there any downsides? And in my opinion, I think there are two. Firstly, those USB-C sockets don't get exposed to Apple Home. That means whilst you can turn the power off to permit the Akara app, you can't do that in the Apple Home app. I don't think this is a limitation of Apple Home because I've seen things like Maros's power strips do that. Secondly, I think it's a shame that you've got 30 watts shared between the two USB-C ports. It means if you want to use something like a HomePod mini with one of them, you basically can't use the other one. This, however, is pretty common amongst similar devices. But all in all, what's the verdict on this new smart socket from Akara? And in using this for a couple of months, I've found that it's reliable, it looks good, and it's nice and easy to automate things with it. It's also super flexible, offering Matter and Zigbee modes as well. And it's a really nice way of having smart plugs and smart USB-C sockets without having to have bulky smart plugs attached to your outlets. I also really like that Akara know that it's a bit thicker than your average socket in the back, so they do give you that space in plate as well. Of course, one thing you may want to factor in with this is the additional cost of having a professional install it if you do want to do that. For that reason, you might want to buy several and have them all fitted at once to try and reduce costs with that. Or maybe you just want to stick with smart plugs because there's nothing wrong with a smart plug. It's still a really affordable way of making something smart around your home. If you've got any questions, stick them below and I will answer those for you. If you do want to pick one up, I'll put some links below as well. That will go to Amazon in whichever country you're in. That's an affiliate link, so if you use that link and make a purchase, thank you very much. It just helps this channel out. This isn't my full-time job and I never take sponsored videos because I want to make sure things stay impartial. I'll also put a link below to the hubs I've mentioned in this video so you can find them easily as well. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe for more tech reviews, and I'll see you guys again soon.